So, Alessandro, thank you very much and welcome. Alessandro Palombo, founder and the CEO of Jure. Uh, so, tell me about you and tell me about Jure. David, thank you so much for this interview and for advising us from the beginning of this project. So, in a few words, we do uh, two things with Jure. Uh, on one side, we are doing uh, let's say for being clear and uh, concise, we are like a WordPress for smart legal contracts. So we are creating a marketplace in which experts can build up without development skills, a master template of a smart legal contract. And users, companies in 20, 30 minutes, they will be able to answer easy questions like today happens for Rocket Lawyer or Legal Zoom, and setting up the proper smart legal contract and asking and accepting payments in stablecoin. So essentially we will be able to um, create a new trust in business relationship in an easy way and of course in a decentralized way. Um, this is one component of Jure ecosystem. This is something we worked a lot in the previous months of with crypto winter, but we started with a different vision, mainly focused on justice on the blockchain, because I think that a big topic will be in the next years, the dispute resolution for blockchain ecosystems and not only. Um, it's a long topic, but in making a long story really short, the smart contracts are going to change everything, but they do need, in a lot of cases, a an effective, affordable and quick dispute resolution system. So we are the only project, and you will see that on the new website and docs, um, to provide also legally binding arbitration on the blockchain. Uh, so we have three different models of dispute resolution. The first one is the purely decentralized, and I'm really proud to say that we developed that. It's actually working on Ethereum, but um, soon it will be moved on Bchain, and we are going to test it uh, with our community and the universities by this summer. Uh, so this is what we do. Essentially, we are the project uh, now and in the last year working for leveraging the complex and sometimes boring legal world and blockchain one with, I would say, interesting, you know, new solutions between 2.0 web and 3.0. And um, yeah, this is currently what we do. <laughs> and uh, we are having, thanks uh, to our team, a good, um, you know, um, penetration in also the markets with some commercial agreements which are I think really valuable for the adoption. So, so uh, you have this overarching mission of justice uh, on the blockchain, yeah. uh, but your minimum viable product is uh, the lowering of the barrier for legally binding agreements between freelancers and job providers, where today freelancers are typically uh, a, a very weak in a very weak position because negotiating a, a legal agreement uh, cannot be done if I have a hundred dollar job uh, for installing a WordPress uh, website and uh, then I'm completely exposed. Now, um, given that, uh, uh, what milestones have you achieved? Uh, do you have a shipping product yet? Uh, do you have users uh, that have started using the product? Yeah, thanks for this question. So what you are mentioning is uh, one component, one part of Jure ecosystem, and it's the one related to uh, smart legal contract and the open jurisdiction, which is the most you know cheap one and hopefully uh, totally free of charge. So we are trying with our test to solve the free lunch prob problem, and we will do some tests for, with universities for, for that. Um, this is the first product we made and we tested internally now and it's ready and it's totally working. So you will see in action in a few months. Uh, we will do probably closed tech tests because I like to involve, you know, in a private way, our community. And we have 7,000 of community members as so far and uh, agreements for um, 5,600 lawyers and 170 medium and big size companies, mainly from uh, Europe and Italy. Uh, those agreements, of course, can I can tell you they are at current users because we believe that um, everything you know valuable takes time. Nobody can tell, hey, next month is going to work. This is not how digital product work, and especially the new one and experimental. So we are trying now to build up strong relations and the basis for an adoption once we release the whole ecosystem. And meanwhile, to use these people, these uh, academics, these lawyers, these companies to test and you know give feedback. Because also something that is not really common in the blockchain industry is, I think it's important to say, digital products are not you know static. You, you, you don't 
it's like a startup at 2.01. You need to evolve. So we are proud to working on that before the token issuance. We have investors with, with which we talk in a really clear way. And sometimes I, I have been really proud in these months of, you know, difficult situations for many projects to, I don't know, one, one, one investor, I, I can't tell the name, but he, he wanted to have a locking period of three years. So he asked me, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm betting here for the long period. I think this should be the right approach and our milestones, you know, we are really committed in doing and, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not, a, if I can make a small joke or story, I'm not really a fan of white papers because white papers can be easily, you know, um, broken or not respected. I, I'm more a fan to deliver maybe something small to test, to show, also for proving your the quality of your delivery and then you, you can evolve. And that's our approach and how we, handle the milestones of our roadmap. And you are working with a very um, <coughs> specific jurisdiction, advising them on how to um, adopt uh, certain regulatory frameworks in order to be uh, ready for blockchain projects. This is the jurisdiction of San Marino. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, tell me, uh, uh, for example, where is San Marino? I'm sure that a lot of people watching the video don't even know that. First, San Marino is a super, super small country within Italy. And uh, a lot of people indeed don't know where it, it is. But I can mm, I can bet that a lot of people will like a lot because also if you want to spend some days for holidays, it is really, it's a really nice place. It's close to Rimini. So in the, let's say, north um, part of Italy. And uh, they have been in the last 12 months, I would say, pretty, pretty good in delivering also uh, what I can tell to be a kind of minimum viable legislation <laughs> to make an analogy with you know startup world um, just a couple of highlights on that uh, i decided to help them at the beginning and i became an advisor a member of the scientific committee of uh, san marino innovation san marino innovation is a, a private company uh, but owned by the state and now thanks to the new legal framework this company has um, regulative powers so it's like you know it's going to be like the FINMA for Switzerland or CONSUB for Italy and so far and so on. Um, they adopted a blockchain legislation. This first step is only for ICOs and STOs regulation. And in my opinion, they did a mm, pretty good job. What I mm, told from the beginning to the uh, Secretary di Stato for, for the governments and uh, to Sergio Mottola, who is the president of Summer Innovation, is that uh, law, you know, in theory, is not enough. Not anymore, because if you have a super amazing law on paper, but it's not going to work in practice, the blockchain industry ecosystem is not going to benefit from that. So uh, what I liked of that jurisdiction is the really practical approach that they are going to have. For example, uh, they work at, I, I can't tell so much because this part is under NDA, but they they are really mm, they are really sensitive to the topic also of the opening of the bank account which is to be really practical for everyone is listening is something that every everyone in this industry really well know so i think that one uh, pro of this jurisdiction will be in the next year in the next three years the practical approach to real you know topics and they they are really open in you know discussing the problems of companies and to onboarding in their in their in their country um, so I, I would say that this is one really of the most important point of, and piece of that ecosystem. And as well, um, there will be a lot of things happening in the next 24 months in San Marino. And uh, I think that uh, if you are in this industry, it, it is really worth to keep an eye on that. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Good luck to, to Jure and good luck to San Marino, <laughs> uh, which uh, is uh, trailblazing. Uh, opening new frontiers uh, and uh, jury is opening new frontiers in uh, uh, in applying blockchain to to the legal uh, field and to the field of justice on on uh, on the internet if uh, you imagine in 10 years time you say uh, even software takes uh, a lot uh, of time to develop so in 10 years time um, jurors mission yeah. uh, is blossoming how do you see that? How do you define your success in 10 years' time with justice uh, on the blockchain? 
Well, I, mm, we are working on this concept, which is Internet of Agreements and of Jurisdictions. So it's, um, mm, unfortunately, is not really, mm, when I say a WordPress for smart legal contract and dispute resolution is much easier. But what we want really to achieve is, um, is something bigger, uh, because uh, it's, um, it's not only trust in business relationship, but it's to draft another way of um, regulating behaviors between enterprises. So uh, let me give you just this really short highlight. Um, we, we worked on one deep explanation of the concept of Lex Mercatoria on the blockchain. Um, one layer of our dispute resolution is a legally binding one. It's the court jurisdiction. You will see in the new white paper. Um, it has been secret until now for some reasons you will read on our medium um, the crucial point of what we are doing is to allowing you know uh, communities and experts to build up arbitration chambers on the blockchain ensuring you know incorruptibility fairness and affordability in a decentralized way so there is no a single authority on that once you do that if you use a specific um, legal you know uh, opportunity which is an arbitration clause I don't want to go too much technical, but essentially we are creating a, a layer which is connected to the enforcement of the states. And on top of that, there is the blockchain layer. So what we are achieving in the long term is to build up also new frameworks of rules, which are from one side independent from the states, but as long they are not contrary to the public order, they can be enforced on the state. So this is one really important element of our vision because we don't want to throw out 2000 of history of jurisdiction and you know law expertise. On the contrary, we want to leverage that. So my goal is to essentially in the first phase to create a real adoption for uh, practical solutions for daily business for small and medium enterprises but in the long term is to allowing communities to creating their own set of rules. This is really important because it changes potentially. It is going to be a long journey, okay? But it is it changes the relationship between individuals and state. Because in states, sorry, because when an individual is free to choose a jurisdiction which is a private one on the blockchain and this jurisdiction is also enforceable in a, in 200 states thanks to our model I think you are completely changing the uh, bandwidth of freedom of individuals and enterprises. And my vision is that states, states are slow in, the, in any case. So I, I believe in private communities, but at the same time, why we use 3.0 models? They are all to be tested. We, t we say that and we test it. But 3.0 models allow a fair competition between jurisdictions and a fair competition between legal frameworks. This is what we really want to achieve in the long term. But you know, from now to the final goal in 10 years, there is a lot of work to do, especially on the user experience. We are really, we are, my, our team is extremely focused on user experience. And just one final word that I would like to express, David, is that um, we partnered and got invested by a specific blockchain ecosystem that it will be public in a few weeks. Um, the reason why we did that is that um, the real adoption for companies, uh, for blockchain technology, won't be in place as soon there are too many cryptocurrencies to be managed. So my vision is that your approach will be to allow people to pay also in fiat money and the system thanks to the technology we are going to implement is to manage uh, on their behalf the you know the crypto this is the line of action in my in my humble opinion for the next 10 years of the industry and to achieving a better goal of a let's say a, a new economy <laughs> thank you very much david thank you Thank you to you for this interview and for advising us from the beginning of this project and I'm really, you know, looking forward for the next steps together. <laughs> Beautiful.